What's up, y'all? My name is DJ Kirkland, and I am a professional comic book artist, and today I am reviewing the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro Drawing Tablet. The folks over at XP Pen were so kind to send me an Artist 24 Pro to review, so I'm gonna do a little drawing with you all today and talk about the product while we do it. Let's get started. I start off every illustration with a sketch on a very small canvas. I usually work at around 150 dpi. I think of this phase as drawing on a very small sheet of paper. I do this to help myself stay focused on making sure I get the anatomy of my drawing exactly how I want. And we're gonna go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. I know it's not exactly the easiest thing to see here, but me and Control Z are excellent friends and the free transform tool as well. Don't be afraid to get in there and resize things. You're never gonna always draw everything perfectly, so it's all good. Like, just get in there, try, and if it doesn't look right, lasso that thing, transform it, and size it up or size it down to make it look right. I know this time lapse makes it look like this is super easy and super quick, but this is sped up tremendously. This whole illustration took about two and a half hours to make. So don't be fooled by how fast this is sped up. I don't actually draw this fast. Now that the sketch is in a place that I like, what I usually do is I'll put all the sketch components into a folder and then lower the opacity of that entire folder. And from there, I'll make a new layer and start drawing on top of that, refining those details of the drawing, like putting in the face, defining the hair, and defining the muscles and the clothing. So when I first got the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro, I was coming off of having a Wacom Cintiq 22 HD that I've had for around seven or eight years. And I really, really wasn't looking forward to having to spend so much money on having to replace that device because it was very expensive. I paid around $2,000 for it. So I went online and started looking for alternatives and I came across the XP Pen and checked the website out and went to start doing a huge deep dive on reviews to see what other artists thought about it. And I was like, let's give it a shot. I want to try it. So once I pretty much settled on getting the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro, I went to Twitter and was like, hey, XP Pen, you guys want to send me a tablet to try out? Because uh, I think it'd be pretty cool if you let me try it out. So um, sometimes just shooting your shot on Twitter works. A big concern that a lot of artists have that are used to working on pen and put displays like this is parallax. And what parallax is, is the distance between the, the screen and the actual LCD panel of the display and how close it is. And I don't really have any parallax issues with the XP Pen. So I'm really, really satisfied with how accurate the cursor is in relationship to the display. What I also really like about the XP Pen tablet is that it has 20 customizable buttons on each side of the display. Um, there are just so many options on both sides that it's a little overwhelming for me. So I haven't even programmed all the buttons myself yet, but I know for people that like shortcut commands, these buttons are invaluable. They're really, really great and they're placed really well on the display. So you have really quick access to either side, depending on what hand you draw with. It's great. So when I start refining the drawings, I always make sure that I draw the body first, and then that's when I start putting the clothes on the characters. I think it's really important to understand how clothes fall and drape on the human body, and studying clothes and looking at fashion and all of that stuff really helps make your clothing for your characters look way more believable. Okay, now that the sketch is finished, we're gonna move on to my absolute favorite part of the drawing process is the inking. I recently found the basic 
super, super basic Cliff Studio Paint G nib that's called the real G nib. And it has just a little bit of texture to it that I really, really like it. That little bit of texture just does something for my line art that I really, really like. So yeah, it's my go-to brush. I use it for pretty much everything now and I just can't get enough of it. I usually get a lot of compliments about my inking and it's truly my favorite part of the process. But for me, inking was something that I ended up learning to love much later on in my career as an artist. I have my professor, uh, John Lowe, to thank for that. When I was in the graduate program at the Savannah College of Art and Design, I took his advanced inking class and I just fell in love with it. And I feel like those traditional skills in learning how to use those traditional materials like a quill and ink really prepares you going into digital because all of those skills transfer over. It does take a little bit of an adjustment to working on a kind of slick and flat screen like the XP pen display has. But once you get the hang of it, it feels really good and definitely find the brush that best fits you. I definitely think that's key with being able to really get in there and really enjoy inking. One of the things that I love most about working digitally is the seemingly endless amount of layers that you can have. So for when I'm inking specifically, once I have a set of lines that I really like, I will lock that layer and create a new layer and start making more lines on top of it. And then once I've gotten those lines to a place where I like, I will merge them together. So my process pretty much is make a layer, ink, make another layer, ink, merge, and keep doing that over and over and over again and locking those layers once I have the lines that I like because I don't want to mess them up because I will because I'm really bad about labeling my layers. So I just lock them and start on a new one and then keep going. Oh man, the symmetrical ruler in Clip Studio Paint is such a lifesaver, especially when I need to draw something that is symmetrical. It just saves so much time and I, I don't know what I would do without this because I do find myself in situations to where I'm drawing symmetrical things a lot and it is so helpful. So drawing the actual XP pen itself was very easy to do thanks to that ruler. Man, Clipsio Paint is such a blessing. So just like in the sketch phase, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to flatten all of the inks together on one layer and I'm going to set that as my reference layer. So when I start doing the shadows and the coloring, it'll reference the line art. And when I use the fill tool, it'll all stay inside of my line art. Okay, now we're starting the coloring phase. And during this phase, what I like to do first, I like to lay down my shadows first. I do the flat coloring process last, only because I want to keep myself focused on making sure that I get the lighting the way that I want. Because when I have the color layer on while I'm working, I find myself getting really distracted. So I just work on the shadows first and I make it just whatever color that I want just to have a color that pops from the screen. You can use whatever color you want. There's no rhyme or reason as to why I use this purplish pink color other than liking purple and pink. Something that I love that XP Pen included in the box along with the tablet was not one, but two pens. I think it's so awesome that they really thought about how anything can happen to the pens, whether we have pets or if we just lose them or if we break them. Having a second one in the box is super, super invaluable. So I 
already feel like that XP pen is looking out for us artists who uh, tend to lose things or if we have people in our lives or ourselves that are prone to breaking things. Having that extra pen as a backup is a total lifesaver. Now that I have my shadow layers laid down, it's time to start picking our colors. So for this piece, what I wanted to do, I really wanted to incorporate all the four colors of the XP Pen logo into his design, which made for some pretty fun color combinations. I played around with the combination of colors a couple of times until I finally landed on one that I liked. I usually make characters with pink hair because I think pink is cool and it's my favorite color, but I think the green hair looks really, really good here. I like it. So some of you might be wondering, is the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro an actual option to replacing a Wacom Cintiq? And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, yes, 100%. It is absolutely a great alternative to the Wacom Cintiq. It's great. It doesn't cost nearly as much as a Cintiq does. And it gets the job done. And I just really, really like it. Not only is the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro tablet cheaper than the comparable Wacom Cintiq, it also has a higher quality display. For those of you that want the specific numbers, the Artist 24 Pro display is 2560 by 1440, and the comparable Wacom Cintiq is only 1920 by 1080. Now that the base colors and shadows are down, we're gonna go ahead and start adding in our highlights. I used to not really do a whole lot of highlights in my work, but I wanted to try something a little bit different here. And to do the highlights, all you need to do is sample the color of the area that you're applying the highlight, set the layer style to add, and there you go. And I'm just making a few minor adjustments to the shadows here. And now we're adding in our background. I wanted to do something kind of abstract, and I also really didn't have much of a plan for the background, so I kind of just experimented in making splashes of colors that are all the colors that are in the XP Pen logo, and just kind of went with it. And we're almost finished with this. And the way that I wanted to finish off this piece was by adding this kind of like retro VHS look to the piece because I just like the way that that stuff looks. It's really, really cool. And I have to thank the person on Twitter named Ramedy who made this auto action in Clip Studio Paint, made it super easy to apply and really get that look that I wanted. So to wrap this all up, would I recommend the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro? Absolutely. I think it's a fantastic alternative to the Wacom Cintiq and it's way more cost effective and it gets the job done just as well as the Cintiq. And here's the final product. I want to thank the folks over at XP Pen again for letting me review this product. I really, really love it. And if you're interested in purchasing one yourself, there will be a link to the website to purchase one in the description below. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me for this 15 minute video. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something along the way too. Thanks again. And I will see you next time. Bye.